CCXI was already up in the 70s when they were running up in anticipation of the initial FDA committee vote. Hey guys, welcome to DreamCoin, where we show how to invest for a better tomorrow. My name's Tyler, and today we're going to be doing a quick update on Chemocentrics and where I think they're going into their FDA decision, why the stock price has been running up pretty decently as of the last couple weeks, and how I see the stock price moving based both on FDA approval and on if they get rejection for their FDA application officially. Now, I've done a previous video on them before, but I felt like it was appropriate to do an update since I was about a month ago when I uploaded that. I've seen a lot more people asking about what I think the direction of the stock is going to be going to since the last video basically was the start of it uptrending from when I put out my initial predictions on them. But basically just to touch on what they do for anybody that's unfamiliar with the stock itself, they are doing a treatment that would essentially help with immune deficiency response systems and different things like that, where they are going to be targeting part of your body body that can help reduce inflammation and block that response, which is, you know, pretty good in the sense that you're not overloading your system with a bunch of different drugs that could also have beneficial or non-beneficial side effects on those. And so this is a little more predictable for how we can expect the body to respond when they're looking at trials and getting their data out. The main thing that they are trying to get approved right now in the beginning of July is going to be known as ANCA associated vasculitis. And this is basically a rare autoimmune disease where that inflammation that we just talked about that they are looking to treat basically starts affecting different organ systems and a lot of the times is basically around shutdown of the kidneys potentially and most of the time it is going to be very fatal for anybody that is afflicted with this which gives them a possible edge with their treatment to get FDA approval considering that there's a lot of safety issues that are current concerns with the stuff that they use to treat this on the market about half of the people that have have this disease and then seek traditional treatment that is on the market right now will end up relapsing with that disease back again in three to five years and first year mortality for anybody even with these treatments is 11 to 18 percent which is almost a fifth of the total population being treated for this right now for a lot of people coming into the stock just now there might be a bit of concern for the price drop off that it had back around may and this was due to the initial fda committee vote on whether or not they would approve this treatment for people that are struggling with this autoimmune disease and it was split slightly positive so that gives me more of a bullish outlook but the issue that is going to concern me now is that the fda seems like they've been a little more harsh recently on some decisions take orf stock that we discussed earlier on the channel in the last week and how even though that's a very rare disease with no treatments right now they still rejected that because they want to be sure and have more data um so there could be something possibly out looking like that for chemocentric as well but they have more recent data than orf did in that specific instance and a lot of the data looks very positive for not only the response system but also the possible non side effects that are mitigated through their treatment something to keep in mind is before this committee vote hc wainwright did have a price target over a hundred dollars to the stock it was 101 they obviously dropped it to about 28 dollars right now but this is going to be a low ball in my opinion because i think they can even without fda decision rebound back into that area before end of year so say like something goes sideways fda gives them a note saying hey we just want to see more data and they have to go through more trials i don't see this being too much downside to the stock from here we could bounce possibly down to that seven to ten dollar area that it was the past few weeks what i'm going to be looking for for a long-term price target is closer to that 90 to 100 dollar area just due to the fact that ccxi was already up in the 70s when they were running up in anticipation of the initial FDA committee vote so they could reach that and get to possible new all-time highs depending on the price action and volume coming in around that time as we look at the chart this is the drop that I told you about that happened back in the beginning of May it went from a high around $50 and then over the course of a week I ended up plummeting down to $10 and lower for a period of time they got down to a low of about $7 at one point and then they have been on a decent trend up since the beginning of June I would say if you're just learning about this stock and either you are 
new to it and are looking into investing or if you've been in it a while and you're wondering if you want to cost in more before they get to FDA decision. I think anything about $13 and less is going to be a decent buy in point come FDA decision. I believe with the way the volume has been coming in with them and how they have been looking fairly nice for an upward trend over the last few weeks, they have a solid chance to hit 20 to $25 before that FDA decision day comes. And since they were leaning slightly positive initially, I'm hoping that's a good sign going into the meeting. Like I said, if they don't get approval, I could see this being a tumbled back down to under $10. But that's about all the downside that I see right now, if any, because they've already sold off a ton when they initially got that committee review. So it's kind of baked into the price right now. You can see most of the time it's trending in an average RSI. So they're not too overbought or oversold, which is nice because they start these trends up at not being overbought in the slightest, especially even settling down. And that's where a lot of consolidation happens down here in the middle. But when they get overbought, they just take up huge trends. So this is like 13 to 14 in the matter of like just a day, like not even it was like a few hours if you count like market day intraday between both. So this looks very nice for them. They're trading around 1350. If you're trying to get in on them on Monday, I would try even if you just want to do like a small amount and do 10 20 percent that you're willing to put towards them and buy power. You can do that, let it settle. And then as it comes down, you can buy a little bit of the dips over time and then kind of accumulate before we get into that decision. I think this is going to be a bit higher risk if you decide to play it after FDA with the way the FDA has been making decisions lately. But I do think there's also a potential for it to fly. So maybe think about like trimming profits as you go up along, make sure you get some of that stuff back out so you're not dropping too much when everything happens. And then you could leave a bit in to let it fly usually is a good way to play these. So I hope you guys have been enjoying my analysis of pharma stocks and biogen stocks over the last few months as I got the channel along. I really like studying a lot of these and studying the science about potential cures for different things as I go on just as much as I do about analyzing the stocks for price movement. So I hope all of the in-depth information helps you guys as time goes on. If you want to watch other pharma stocks that I've done, I will have a playlist up for that shortly after this video is up so that you guys can go through and see all the different types of pharma stuff that I've dealt with over the past few months. Other than that, that's going to do it for me in this video today, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.